cases. Today in Brussels, Belgium, police use water cannons and tear gas to control protesters outraged by new restrictions. Some also carried signs critical of vaccines. CBS's Elizabeth Palmer takes a closer look at the global crisis. COVID infections around Johannesburg in South Africa tripled in just three days last week. The suspected cause, Omicron, the new mutated variant of COVID, which was first spotted last month by scientists in Southern Africa who raised the alarm. It's early days, but so far Omicron does look easy to catch and to spread. Scientists around the world are now racing to figure out if Omicron will cause serious disease and whether vaccines will protect us. Restrictions on travel from Southern Africa may have slowed it down, but they haven't stopped it. Lab sequencing shows Omicron is in at least 38 countries and counting. But worldwide, it's the Delta variant that is still overwhelmingly dominant and as lethal as ever, especially for the unvaccinated. Germany is being hammered by a fourth wave. Medical staff in Bavaria lit up the ICU facility in red as a warning, while the Air Force was drafted in to transfer patients away from areas overwhelmed to hospitals that can cope. On Friday alone, more than 1,500 Europeans died of COVID. Where I am in South Korea, the government is suddenly having to deal with a huge unexpected surge in COVID cases, the Delta variant. From Belgium to Spain, protests erupted across Europe over the weekend in response to new and reimposed COVID-19 restrictions. In Brussels, the protests turned violent, with police using tear gas and water cannons on demonstrators that appeared to toss cobblestones and fireworks at them. The capital was filled with people protesting COVID-19 certificates needed to access bars and restaurants and the implementation of mandatory mask wearing for most primary school children. I am a natural being and I want to choose over my own uh, body and my uh, own free will and that's why I'm here. Tens of thousands of protesters across the continent came out to march and demonstrate against the COVID restrictions in their countries. Last month, Austria became the first country in Western Europe to reimpose a full COVID-19 lockdown. But still, more than 40,000 people came out this weekend to protest these measures. I'm here because I'm against forced vaccinations. I'm for human rights, and the violation of human rights should be stopped. And in Spain, thousands of protesters took to the streets of Barcelona to protest COVID-19 certificates showing proof of vaccination, a negative test, or a COVID recovery in the last six months. Those are now required to enter bars, restaurants, gyms, and care homes. No, Europe on edge, perhaps even more so than the U.S., where only a limited number of cities have such restrictions. All this as the world looks ahead to what the Omicron variant might bring. Matt Bradley, NBC News. London. Businesses have been forced to close after thousands of anti-vaccine protesters brought their anger to the regional city. But the groups claim that their cause shares similarities with the Eureka Rebellion has been met with outrage. More from Elizabeth Moss. Shoulder to shoulder, they marched. A 2,000 strong crowd descending on the streets of Ballarat. Some locals, others travelling in convoy from Melbourne. I'm a musician, I can't work. I can't go to a, a pub or do any gigs or anything like that. My husband lost his job and um, he's been a very dedicated uh, worker for 35 years and, um, you know, because of the mandates, he lost his job. A dotted sea of signs and Eureka flags. The group comparing its so-called fight for freedom to the values of those in the 1854 rebellion. They were standing up in defence of what they believed in, so essentially that's what we're doing today. The city's Eureka Centre and Council opting to reschedule commemoration events originally planned for today. The Eureka rebels that are buried at the old Ballarat Cemetery there in Ballarat will be turning their graves today. These people think freedom 
is the freedom to do what they want. As the marchers made their way down Bridge Mall, businesses shut their doors. Others had already closed for the day in anticipation. So I guess the nature of this one uh, has had a lot of businesses sort of worried about whether to open or close. Look, we respect people's right to protest and people to have their freedoms, but at the same time they think it would be nice if people realise how they're impacting other people's freedoms. A lot of tourists here today, so I don't, yeah, I don't understand the, um, the whole closing down of businesses. OK, let's go live to Elizabeth in Ballarat for us. Lizzie, the crowds have started to die down. Dougal, they have a portion of that crowd was planning to march back here to Civic Hall, but as you can see, it's... and fire officers in the FDNY from the test and vax program. So why change it? 
Why do we? Why we've already achieved the goals? Why are we change that? One person is making that decision. One person is making this mandate happen to the fire department, even though we're successful. That's Bill de Blasio. That's our mayor imposing.